Hello, my name is Nanika Edwards. Um, I am from Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. And I am up in the wee hours here uh, in Trinidad on the 18th of June, 2023. And I was just spending some time connecting with my bestie with a capital B. And that's Daddy God, that's um, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you know, but Daddy God, God the Father. Um, and I was talking to God and I was saying, God, you know, I, I was talking to him about a, a vision that he had given me many years ago, back in 2006. And I asked him if, you know, if I should share it, what I should do. And, um, and uh, you know, I have shared it before. I shared it at um, a church that I used to belong to. Um, I shared it one Sunday morning. I'm not sure exactly which year, maybe somewhere around maybe 2008 or 2009. And that was the first and last time that I shared it publicly, you know, in a public forum. And when I did share it, really, it was in the context of, I think, um, just people from the congregation being invited to, um, to share their, their thoughts on something in particular. I can't remember um, what it was now, but it was in that context that I shared it. Um, at the time, I don't think anybody ever really commented to me or pulled me aside or said that it was important that I share it with other people beyond the church or anything like that. You know, it just pretty much ended there. And and um, I pretty much, to be honest, it faded, really faded to the back of my mind until fairly recently when I was taking part in a Bible study group. Um, and when I joined the Bible study group, they were, they had just, they were just, they had, they had just started studying the book of Revelation and in studying the book of Revelation and being reminded of the, the very close proximity, if I could put it like that, the, the short amount of time between now and Jesus's second coming when I was reminded of that I I remembered my vision and I I um I at some point maybe a couple weeks in I spoke with the bible study leader and asked him if he thinks um no I didn't ask him I think he, I I happened to mention this vision to him you know and explained what I saw and he asked me if I had ever shared it with anybody because you know God doesn't give us a vision so that we keep it to ourselves I'm sorry that I'm that I'm taking so long to explain all of this but I just want to give the full context of why I'm sharing this um anyway he said you know you you um God doesn't give you a vision so you can keep it to yourself. So I explained to him that, you know, I had shared it um, during a Sunday morning service at the church that I used to go to and so on. And I did ask him if I could have shared it with the Bible study group. But um, and I think he was open to it. He was open to it. But um, but anyway, that's a whole other story right there. I never did share it with the Bible study group. But anyway, uh, I am sitting here in the wee hours, you know, I've never, ever really felt compelled to share what I saw, you know, in my mind's eye and my, on the, if I could say it, the mirror, the pond mirror of my soul, you know, the images that kind of um, took shape there. I, I've never really um shared these things with too many people to be honest 
um, not because I was trying to hide anything, but simply because I just never felt compelled. And I'm not the kind of person who feels like I need to show off and say, hey, look, God gave me a vision. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm not like that. So I've generally kept it to myself, maybe mentioned it to one extent or another when speaking to people about certain things, you know, about the fact that the coming of Jesus is very close and so on. But generally, I haven't mentioned it very much and I certainly haven't put it out there for public consumption. But I am about to do that because I'm about to step beyond the privacy of my inner world and um, share what God shared with me. And I should explain that um, having visions from the Lord um, is not something that I would say, um, how to put it? Um, it's not something that was a, a first time experience for me. You know, when I first came to the Lord, um, when I was in high school, I was immediately thrown into a very turbulent spiritual battle. I mean, it was really fierce, um, really, really tough. And it was in the middle of all of that that I got to know the Lord. And it was a baptism of fire, literally, <laughs> almost literally. And it was in the middle of those spiritual battles that I really got to know the voice of God. And because the battles were so intense. Um, I think that God matched the intensity of the darkness with the counterforce of the intensity of his glory um, being revealed in my heart and my thoughts. So during that time, I tended to see a lot of things, you know, Maybe at the time I wouldn't have called them visions, but I think that's what they were. I'm not going to get into those here, but um, I'm just saying that to say that um, my early Christian walk with God was, was one of the signature features of that was the fact that I often saw things, you know, um, God just gave me... Uh, maybe a Jeremiah spirit, I guess. And it was a huge part of me surviving um, the things that I went through at that time. Anyway, <laughs> enough of a preamble. Let me tell you about the vision that God gave me about the end times and the return of Jesus Christ. It's a very simple vision in a sense. It's nothing to... I don't think it's I don't think it's very complex or involved but you know it's it, it, anyway when you hear it you know you can have a conversation with God see what God is saying to you what you think he's saying through this vision I'll tell you maybe one or two things that I think you know that I thought that I have thought um since having that vision and what I think about it and so on but Anyway, here's the vision. So um, what I will do is tell you what I remember without referring to my notes, because what I did was I jotted down um, a sketchy kind of description of what I was sensing in my journal. So when I was younger, I used to keep journals where I would record, um, where I would record you know, just all kinds of different things. And among those things I recorded, specific things I felt that God was putting on my heart. So based on what I see in my diary, in my journal, I had this vision in early 2006, near the end of March. Um, I'll give you the exact date when I read my journal entry for you at the end of all, uh, you know, when I finish this general description. 2006 was a year that I flew to Japan to take part in the JET program um, as a, an English language teacher. That's how I remember, that's how I have generally remembered the year 
in which this vision took place. I knew it was somewhere around the time that I went to Japan, but I uh, recently, I, I just couldn't remember if it was 2006 or 2007, but I just checked my diary and I realized it was 2006. I went to Japan in August of 2006. And it would seem that uh, these thoughts were in my mind, maybe from mid-March um, or the end of March. So let me tell you what I remember. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I remember that I was in the kitchen. Um, I was in the kitchen where I live, in my home. And I do believe I was just reaching into the cupboard to take out a bowl. And as I was taking out the bowl, I remember I was doing something with a dish. And I want to believe it was a bowl, like a ceramic bowl, like a little cereal bowl. And uh, as I pulled the, as I had, as I reached for the bowl, I realized, you know, there's something in my spirit. It's just been lingering there, just lingering there. And it had been there for a while. I'm not sure how long, but I realized, wait a minute, there's something in my spirit. There's something weighing upon me in my spirit. Not in a, not in a, not in a, not in a heavy gray kind of way but in a way where it was calling for my attention and it and it was just gonna stay there until I gave it my attention so but it was so subtle but so pressing also at the same time that it took me a while to really pay attention to to, to it being there so when I so I stopped I stopped I stood up in the kitchen I want to believe. I think that's what I did. I just stood up and focused in on that feeling inside of me. I know that may sound strange, but that's what I did. And as soon as I did that, a whole scene, an animated scene just unraveled inside of me in my mind's eye. And I saw, uh, not just inside of me, but also kind of in front of me, if I could put it like that, like I was seeing it, even though my eyes were wide open. And what I saw was, um, first of all, I saw a tribe of people walking together, like a tribe, a small group. It looked like a small group. Um, the person at the head of the group looked like Moses. He was dressed like somebody who looked like Moses. He had a staff in his hand. And um, they looked like the Israelites when they were leaving Egypt, you know, when they had just left Egypt and they were traveling through the desert. That's what it looked like. But what struck me about the group was that they were moving very, very quickly. They were moving very, very, very quickly. I couldn't tell. I don't think they were running. I think they were walking, although I, I don't think I saw their legs. I didn't see what their legs were doing, but I could see that they were moving forward very, very, very quickly. And all of a sudden, the image panned upwards above the group, and I both saw and heard the voice of the Lord at the same time. And I know that may sound strange, but... Um, especially if, if you're hearing this and you're not a believer, but when God speaks to you, when you have a, a some kind of interaction with the other realm, with the, with the, with the unseen realm, a lot of times um, the experience is hard to package within um, the natural human experience. It's just another dimension that is very different from the natural world. Anyway, the image, pan, the, 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 the perspective, I should say, the perspective panned upwards. And when it did, it was above the group. And I suddenly heard and saw the voice of God above the group. And I heard a voice say, and I knew it was God's voice. And he said, this is it. There is no turning back. This is it. I heard this is it twice. This is it. Call in the lame, 
call in the sick because and and as I heard that I saw people being added to the group it was kind of like you know those I think if I remember correctly you know those um in a cartoon where you have a dog and cat fight happening and you see a big cloud of dust it was kind of like that as the as people were added to the group the and the group didn't stop moving as people were added if I remember correctly the it was they were still moving forward but people were being added to the group and um i saw the lame i saw the sick it almost looked kind of like a cartoon in a sense but not exactly like a cartoon certainly not with the same kind of frivolity that a cartoon would have but anyway i saw like a cloud of dust and the lame and the sick being added in and um you know when i thought about it afterwards i knew the fact that god said this is it twice i knew that what god was saying was my mind is made up this is it and when i say this is it i mean this is it the other thing is when i saw the lame and the blind and the sick and so on being added in i knew that it wasn't just lame blind sick um physically although maybe that may be true on one level I knew that what God meant was that it would be the lame, the blind, the sick on a social level, on an on a on a um bigger social level. You know, when you think of those who are margin typically marginalized um in in across societies, these are the people that God is talking about. I couldn't help but think also when I thought of this afterwards of the parable of the wedding feast when um, I believe it was a king invited people to come to his wedding. And the first set of people that he invited were very contemptuous of his invitation and turned him down. And then he told his servants to go out and bring people in from the highways and the byways. And it was, it's that kind of dynamic that I was sensing in the calling the lame, calling the sick. You know, that that's what that reminded me of. I don't know if it reminds you of that, but that's what it reminded me of when I thought about it afterwards and really processed it. Anyway, the vision continued. Um, the so this lame and the sick came in. The 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 the, the um the group the tribe of people. And by the way, they didn't look modern. Like I said, they looked like the Israelites would have looked when they were marching through the desert. A really small group. I mean, um. To me, I know this may sound strange, but it looked like a group of no more than maybe, I don't know, nine, 10 people, but maybe representing a bigger group. But I knew it was a small group. It was a relatively small group. Anyway, um, the the perspective then panned, like the, the perspective panned from the voice above, being above the group, then back down to the group. Um, okay, so let me start over. First, I see a group moving quickly. Then the image pans above the group. I hear God's voice saying, call in the lame, call in the sick. The image then pans back down to the group. And I, I see people, the lame and the sick being added into the group, like a big cloud of dust, like the thing you, something you would see in a cartoon, right? And then the perspective, uh, and all the while the group is moving, then the perspective panned forward when I say forward like ahead of the group what the what the group would have seen in front of them and then I realized oh the group is actually walking towards a specific destination they're moving towards a specific destination and I saw what it was there was this ball of light a ball of light and it was just swirling a ball of light that was swirling um just a ball of light just swirling um i think it was like maybe yellow yellow white white yellow kind of color if i remember correctly and then it panned back to the group and i realized that the group was very 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 extremely close they were not far from the ball of light and then um it panned back to the ball, ball of light the perspective hand back to the ball of light and again remember it's swirling right it's swirling in one direction and um if i remember correctly it was swirling left to right left to right in a in a clockwise direction i think it was swirling in a clockwise direction and um then 
the group got right in front of the ball of light and all of a sudden, starting with Moses in the front, they dived into the ball of light. As soon as they got to the ball of light, they all dived right into the center of the ball of light. And what was interesting was that um, the, the, how to put it, the, 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 the swirling elements of that ball of light stretched as they, as they dived in. It, it, no, the, 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 the swirling elements didn't stretch. Sorry, my mistake. They stretched when they dived in. When they dived in, they stretched. I saw the people stretching like they were, they, they, they physically stretched. And um, I realized that they had dived into, uh, well, I assume they had um, dived into um, another dimension, you know, the, the afterlife kind of thing, the other, the, the side of eternity where, um, well, let's put it, I just knew they dived into another dimension, right? Uh, the dimension where they were going to be with God forever. Uh, I, I in, Intuitively, I understood that. Now, I should explain that years later, when I, um, many years later, like sometime after I had shared the vision when I had already come back from Japan, so I was in Trinidad, that was like around 2008, 2009, uh, somewhere around there, maybe no later than 2010. Um, what I learned subsequently, I think when I was maybe looking at a BBC news on a BBC article on maybe astrophysics or something like that. I'm not too sure, but I, or maybe it's something somebody said um, during a church service when they were maybe um, mentioning something about astrophysics. I really can't remember where I got this information, but it was at that point that I learned that um, uh, when, it, when it comes to black holes, if I'm not mistaken, if something enters a black hole and it's going into another dimension of the universe, it will stretch. Whatever goes through the black hole would stretch. So I don't know. I don't know how to, I mean, I thought that was very interesting because when I, when I described my vision to the church, uh, that I belonged to at the time, I forgot to mention that detail of people stretching. You know, I really forgot. But then when I, when I, um, when I, you know, saw this um, article or when I heard this information about what happens when something enters a black hole, um, I remembered, I said, yes, I remember, you know, when Moses jumped in, he really did stretch. He stretched as he, as he dived into the black hole. So, and I assume it was Moses. The guy looked like, the, the person looked like Moses. Anyway, that's the vision. That's a vision that I had of a, of a tribe of people, a very small group of people moving very quickly towards a ball of light. The closer they, the, as they got closer to the ball of light, although I didn't realize that's what they were moving towards at first. I hear the voice of God saying, this is it, call in the lame, call in the sick. This is it, there is no turning back, call in the lame, call in the sick. And then they move closer to um, the ball of light and eventually they, they, they get right up to it they, and they soon get right up to it. They dive into it, they stretch and that was the end of the vision. So let me tell you exactly what I recorded in my um in my journal. Now bear in mind, my journal, I kept records, like handwritten records, right? So I did not put all of that detail into um into my written record because it just would have taken too long for me to write down all of that, right? I just committed it to memory. But I'll tell you what I wrote. I think the date for this, if I'm not mistaken, looking at it now, is, um, let's see, the 28th of March, 2006, which was a Tuesday, 28th of March, 2006. And by the way, the time of day when I had the vision, it was during the day. I remember that. It was during the day. I want to believe it was somewhere around mid-morning. 
maybe around mid morning. I want to believe. I'm not too sure. I really can't remember. Um. Anyway, let me tell you what I wrote. Um. Okay. Let me see. Where is it? Where is it? Right here it is. Okay. So my entry for the twenty eighth of March, two thousand and six was which was a which was a Tuesday. Here's the entry of late. I've been sensing a whole tribe and community traveling together toward their final destination and resting place. I have a sense of everyone making every effort that no one be left behind. There was a sense of God's glory and care for God himself was grabbing up people and sweeping in as many as possible. God's heart is that no one be left behind that as many as possible make it for this is truly the final leg. After this, there is no going back. This is the final leg. I saw backsliders and prodigal sons, all who could be brought back, swept into the march towards the finish. Finish with a capital F. I have no idea when this thought began to enter my mind, but I would say over the last few days. So I didn't even remember that this feeling was inside of me for a few days. It's it's interesting that I've, I had never had a vision come to me like that. Usually, you know, you see something, you see it, right? You see it right away. But this was the first time that I had something linger on the inside of me and not unfurl itself until I focused on it. If I had not focused on it, you know, inwardly focused on it and given it my attention to this day, I would not have known what God was trying to say to me. As soon as I focused on it in that moment, in an instant, it unfurled itself. And so it seems that it was inside of me for a few days, but it, like I said, it was so subtle and yet so pressing at the same time, a, 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 an urgent, gentle pressing, but it was so subtle that I imagine I missed that for days. But as soon as I realized that something was there kind of pressing on the inside of me, and as soon as I focused on it, 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 it unveiled itself. Um, so that is, um, that was my vision, uh, that tool that w in which God made it very clear to me, and I hope it will make it clear to anybody listening to this, that the time is very short. The return, the second return of Jesus Christ is imminent. It's, it's, it's very, very soon, very, very soon, um, I don't know what the timeline is. I couldn't I couldn't tell you what the timeline is from my um from my vision. I mean the Bible says that nobody knows, not even the son knows the timing, only the father. But what God is saying through this vision, and I don't think he, I'm the only one he's been talking to, um, is that the time is very, very close. And when I think of how close um the tribe was to that ball of light. I don't even think we're talking centuries, you know? Um, I don't think we're talking centuries. I'm not even so sure we're talking a century. We might be talking decades or, I don't know, something very, very, um, this is, let's put it like this. This is one time when we don't have to, I think, um, try to equate, um, uh, what do you call it, heavenly time and terrestrial time in a way that um, allows for chronological, vast chronological distance. You almost, you almost feel like when God says it is going to be very soon, that there's chronological synchronization there. That when God says soon, God soon is our soon. Whatever we call soon is God soon. It's not like one year is a thousand years kind of thing. I don't, I don't think it's that. That's just me talking, right? Beyond the 
beyond the vision itself. So I really hope that um, this speaks to anybody listening to this in a very urgent way, in the urgent sense that I got in God's voice. When I heard his voice saying, call in the sick, call in the lame, there was a real urgency in his voice real urgency because he's saying this is it i'm not going back as much as i love people i'm not going back this is it so um that's it that's a vision again my name is nanika edwards i'm from trinidad and tobago i've been a uh, i've loved the lord since i was a little girl um officially you could say formally gave my heart to the lord in high school when I understood things a little better as a little girl, I didn't, I didn't understand a lot of things and things weren't really, I didn't have an adult in, in my life who sat down and explained things to me. But in my high school years, I formalized that child like um, interest in God that I know God was honoring. Even when I was a little child, even as a little child, I think he started writing my law on his heart, on my heart, even though I had never really read a proper Bible. I read a children's Bible and I loved it. And um, I've loved the Lord since I was a little child. And one thing I would like to share is um, I would like, I meant to share this at the start, but um, the reason why I decided to share this today, <laughs> it's a wee hours, by the way, it's now 4.13 a.m. Um, I was talking to God, as I mentioned, as I got, you know, sh would, should I share this? Who should I share it with? And this is a verse that came to mind for me. Um, the verse that I sensed, I didn't get the exact full verse, but when I looked it up, I realized, yes, this is a verse that God brought to mind. And let me read it for you, or the verse is. This is, jo uh, no, not Joel, this is Habakkuk 2. Habakkuk 2 to 3. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Let me read that again. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry um the other thought i wanted to share um just also to provide a little context oh that's just a car passing by i don't know if you heard that but anyway this is from um joel 2 joel chapter 2 verses let me see where is it? Uh -huh. Verses 28 to 29. You know, if you're wondering, well, Nika, who do you think you are to be sharing this vision? I don't think um, anything in particular, but um, God saw it fit enough to share that message with me. And I didn't ask him to. I was minding my own business. <laughs> Um, and he shared that with me. I'm, no, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a pastor's wife. I'm not, you know, any, um, in, when, when I got this vision, I, I was not anything in particular in the church. I did not hold any special position, but this is what Joel 2, chapter 2, verse 28 to 29 says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Excuse me. And if I go on further to like verse 30, 31, 30, 
31, 32. If you're wondering what those days are, I think it's these days that we're in. It says, um, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Think of how many, you know, um, how many astro um, what is it? Astro uh, astronomy related signs and wonders we've been seeing over the last little while. And I will show wonders in the heaven and, and the types of things we, we, we see mentioned in the book of Revelation. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the lord and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved for in mount zion and in jerusalem there shall be deliverance as the lord has said among the remnant whom the lord calls so yeah that's it um i hope this vision doesn't just titillate you but i hope it will move you to action whether the action is to cry out to the lord um to be saved or whether it is to reach out to people that you know your loved ones friends acquaintances whoever the lord puts it on your heart to um to to talk to uh, you know whether it moves you to just scatter seed you know among the different types of soil you know however people respond is not our response is not our responsibility that's an individual responsibility but i certainly hope um that this um sh that the sharing of of what god shared with me that it would move everybody who hears this to responsible responsible action to wise action to action filled with understanding and knowledge of what is what is what is pressing upon god's heart with great 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 deep urgency so that's it and uh that's it for now